I should be on top of this stuff, but I'm not. Because a month ago, I got this email finally granting me access to Copilot Workspace Technical Preview, something I was really looking forward to trying out. And then I just kind of, well, forgot about it. But I just tried it and I'm impressed. There are a few kinks I ran into, but when I figured out the workflow, it worked pretty well. I have this repository. I'm updating this Blazor project to .NET 8, along with some styling changes. This used to be on Bootstrap 4, and then I got handed a redesign, which uh, was done in Figma. And when you export and code in Figma, it doesn't do Bootstrap styles. It just does inline styles and a ton of it. So if you take a look here on the left, this is what I ended up pasting into my project. There's a bunch of divs and a bunch of inline line styles. It works. It looks good. And for the purposes of this project, it actually doesn't really matter. But I don't feel good inside about it. I want it to be neat. So I had Workspaces take a stab at it. By the way, not sponsored video, not by Microsoft, not by GitHub. I thought I'd just share this because it's pretty cool. This is like a very different approach to what we're used to is working with AI, with generative AI, like Copilot inside your editor or just copying and pasting code into an LLM, for example, into a chatbot. This is a completely different experience for developers approaching it from a different angle which is what's really cool about it. So I read the getting started. The first thing it says is you create an issue in your repository and then you can open it in workspace. Yeah, that works, but there's no way to change your branch for master at that point. So you kind of have to always start over. They're working on it. It's one of the things that they know is a problem and they're gonna fix it. There's a known issues section here that lists a lot of the different things that they're still working on. That's why it's a technical preview and not a production product, but it's coming and it's cool. And I was able to work around this by just going to Copilot Workspace Home. And then from here, I created a new session. Basically, this allows you to start from scratch. You need to describe the task. So I went and copied that issue that I created and it actually did a really amazing job at converting what I had into Bootstrap five layout code. This is that commit right here. Look how much crud it got rid of. Now, the only problem that I ran into is this image, even though it had the bootstrap classes applied, it was too large. So I needed to manually size it like it used to be right here with the style width and height. I probably should do that with my own classes, but I didn't. What I want to try now is see how much more it can do. This was for one component. I want to see if this can do it for the entire project. When I'm on the new session, you want to make sure you're on the right branch because this is the wrong branch again. You want to go to new session and then select select a branch and then give it the branch name here. You also have to just type it in for now because they don't have a drop down yet, probably coming sooner or later. There's my branch select. Now describe the task. Um, the HTML in my Blazor components uses, see, I'm talking to it like I'm talking to an LLM and not really like an issue should be filed. I think I should be talking to it like a, it's an LLM, like a chatbot almost, and it'll just interpret what it needs to. But you can also probably use issue type of formatting, uh, issue type of language as well. I'm just gonna do this, add specification. And now it's going to analyze the repository read file cache. The Blazor components in the repository use static inline styles extensively. It analyzed each one of the components and found out that, yeah, I have inline styles and all those. This one uses bootstrap classes, but also including some inline styles. And here it's going to propose some changes. Notice it's not doing that app bar dot razor, which I already changed. Well, it changed it. That's good. We don't want to change that file. It's already set. The other ones need some help. So let's generate this plan. Writing analysis, components, backlog, details, form, razor. It's writing out what it's gonna do for each one of these files. It uses a form group and form control classes for form elements, button and button primary classes for the submit button. Yeah, container fluid for layouts. These look like correct changes. It's not giving me all the details, but uh, I guess we'll have to trust it and see what happens. Implement selected files, boom. All right, it's going through one file at a time and changing these things, but it's not actually applying the changes, right? You're gonna need to approve it. You can publish it to a new branch. I'll show you that in a second. And uh, here are the changes. It's much cleaner, that's for sure. And it did get rid of all the inline stuff, replaced it with bootstrap stuff. I wonder if it's going to look the same. Speaking of how it looks, well, here is the app actually running. It's an issue tracker application. This is the dashboard. There's a backlog page where we have a list of items here. And then if you click on one of these, we're going to have the details page for one of these with to do list as well as chat. I'll be able to immediately tell if there's a problem because I've been working on this application around it for a number of years. So I kind of know it. Is it done? Nope. Still doing one more. 
while I was finishing up, just want to say that I tried this with the small component first. Did a good job there, but here we got a lot more risk, right? We're changing a lot of files all the same time. We can probably pick and choose different things or work on it one file at a time if we specify that. But I wanted to see how far we can get just doing a completely huge change. And it looks like it finished. So now I can create a pull request down here or I can do push to a new branch. It gives it a branch name, which you can rename. And it's got a commit message that it generates by itself. I don't need to do stuff. You know what word I was going to use, but I don't need to do anything. Of course, if this doesn't follow guidelines for your organization, then you might need to rewrite that, which you probably can once it's done writing. You can edit this message. I'm just going to push the branch and it's called use bootstrap. Let's go over to my code and I'm going to check out to use bootstrap. Take a look at uh, one of the pages dashboard page here. Yep, there it is div class container div class row. This is all bootstrap styles. So this uh, should work. Well, it's using bootstrap styles. We don't know how it's going to look. I'm going to run it. OK, yeah, it's close. It's close. I think I just need to make a few modifications, but it's not 100 percent. So there's this large space over here before it was not responsive at all. Now it's responsive, but it's not exactly how I want it. It's uh, partially there. To be honest, at this point, I'm not exactly 100% sure if I'm going to have more work to do to fix up what I did or if this is actually getting me closer to what I need. Just by looking at how much code it got rid of and simplified, that's already a huge bonus for me. All these nested divs were basically detected as being redundant and doing all the same kind of stuff and they were replaced directly with bootstrapped classes. I think at this point, we're much closer to where we need to be. And it's a lot simpler. We got rid of lines of code. I like getting rid of code. It's the best thing ever to be able to get rid of code and everything still works. In this case, we do have some modifications to make. True. Let's take a look at the backlog page. This is the list and this one looks pretty good. We still have the list. Our filters work. This label for this page is in the middle for some reason. Not sure why it should be aligned to the left. OK, clicking on these takes me to the details page and the details page has a form in it, but it's now stretched out entirely to 100 percent of the page instead of being just half the page. But that's probably a simple fix, I'm guessing. Yeah, this is all <laughs> bootstrap styling now. Pretty good. Let's take a look at this details page. Oh, that's that's kind of odd. I didn't expect to see this in here. I thought this would have been replaced. So it did details form, but it didn't do details page. It didn't detect that. So I'm going to need to go back to have it work on this page. That's fine. But it did do apparently this details form. So this should all be. Yeah, this is all bootstrap five classes. Got a container and so on. Let's take a look at backlog page text center. That's the wrong decision right there. It's it's centering that text. And that's why we're having this issue where the backlog. This thing is in the middle. Not sure why I came up with that idea, but uh, you know, we can modify things. My hope with this was that I wouldn't have to do this kind of modifications. Yeah. So if I just remove that, we got the backlog in the right place. Does this get us to where we need to be? Well, it's kind of still a work in progress. It's not 100 percent. And I don't know if it's ever going to be 100 percent. It depends what kind of project you want what your needs are, how familiar you are with the material and how you want it to look. Do you want it to look exactly or do you not care if it's a few pixels off? The impressive part about this is that it took completely static styles with nested divs and it converted it to a library that I just named. Use those classes. It knew what those classes did, how to apply it to my application and still have it usable and look normal. Nothing's overlapping. Things are shifted just a tad bit, but they can be shifted back into place overall. Pretty incredible stuff. Once you review this, you can make some changes to it. You can push the commits back into this branch and then merge this branch with master or main. Anyway, thought I'd share this with you. I found it pretty fascinating how this thing works, approaching this kind of problem with AI from a very different perspective and a completely different workflow. So I'm looking forward to when this feature is going to be fully released and in production, because I see myself using something like this over just what I've been using inside the editor. Now, there's other features in here that I haven't even tried yet. Let me know if you tried any of these other things like connecting this to code spaces or using the terminal in relation to this. Speaking of code spaces, I did make a video about that. You can watch it right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.